Okay, in this screencast we're going to talk about basic make files. So in the previous screencast we talked about program organization, how to divide a program into multiple files, and we talked about how to eliminate the problem of multiple header expansion or multiple header inclusion. So just to remind you, let's go back through the files. Let me first get rid of my compiled code and we can take a look at the files. So here's our main function. Very simply just computes the average of some numbers read from the keyboard. Here's the .h file for the main. Notice that we're including numbers.h here. That will come into play a little later. Here's the implementation of the numbers class with the read method, the average method. And then here's the include file or the header file for the numbers class. And in addition to including IO stream and vector, it's also defining or declaring the numbers class. So to compile this, one thing we can do is we can compile all of the source files. And that gives us an executable. And keep in mind that where we're going with this is, you know, what about a software project where I have thousands of files and millions of lines of code? So if you had thousands of source files, you're certainly not going to type them out on the command line. So another thing you might try to do is use some pattern matching in your shell and this star.cc will match with all of the files with .cc as an extension in your directory. So you could compile that way too. But you know, the, now the problem is is you're you're compiling all the lines of your uh, of code. And you're going to have to do that at least once, but once you've built a large portion of your project, you don't necessarily need to recompile everything when you're making changes. So the first step in avoiding compiling everything is to recognize that we can compile these files individually. And so I can specify the dash C option. I can compile main.cc and I get a main.o. I can compile numbers.cc and get a numbers.o. And now I can link those files into an executable. And there are dependencies that you can exploit uh, so that you don't have to recompile all of your lines of code. So for example, uh, if we look at main.cc, you know that I'm using numbers to implement main, but main is independent of numbers, right? There's a, a directional dependency here. Uh, main is dependent on numbers, but numbers is not dependent on main. So if I make a change here, if I change average to lowercase average, I don't need to recompile numbers, but I do need to recompile main.cc. And I can recompile main.cc by saying that. I get a new main.o, and I can relink the new main.o with the old numbers.o. And if I run this, then you see that I have a lowercase average. And just to change it back, I just need to recompile main.cc and relink. And I get my new executable. And you can see that I have the capital average. Now for a large program with thousands of files and millions of lines of code, you're not going to be able to understand these dependencies among these classes. And these dependencies are not going to be simple. It's not just going to be main is dependent on numbers. And so if I change numbers, I have to compile numbers in main. Some of these dependencies could be three or four, you know, links long. It's just going to be impossible to, 
to understand the complexity of that. So fortunately we have some build tools that will do a lot of this uh, work for us. And the build tool we're going to learn about here is called Make. And you can do, on a Unix machine, you can look at a man page, short for manual, for make. Now, it's not going to look good here because of the uh, resolution of the screen. But you can also Google make tutorial or something like that. And there's some books that you can read about the make utility. So the way the make utility works at the command line is we create a make file and the make utility reads the contents of the make file and based on the contents of the make file it can determine what .cc files need to be recompiled and then it will just relink and build your executable so the default name for a make file is either capital make file or lowercase make file you can also give it any other name you want you can there's a way you can specify that name on the command line Generally speaking, a make file consists of entries, and we'll learn about uh, just a couple of different entries. We'll learn more about it, uh, entries in the next screencast. And for our purposes, let's say that an entry consists of a dependency. Oops, sorry. And a command. And actually, you can have multiple commands, but we're, we're only worried about one command. And it's critically important that this character preceding commands be a space. I'm sorry, be a tab. It can't be a space. In fact, you should put some spaces in there when you get your make file working and see what happens. Because this will be an error you will make, and it will keep you up late at night, and it would be good for you to make the error yourself so that you can recognize it when you make it inadvertently. So we have a dependency and we have a command. So let's look at an example of a dependency. So at the top level, a.out, which is our target, our executable, that's dependent on main.o and numbers.o. I have to have a main.o and a numbers.o in order to make an a.out. Well, assuming I have a main.o and a numbers.o, the things on the right-hand side, what is the command for producing an a.out? Well, it's just g++ main.o and numbers.o. Well, how do I get a main.o and how do I get a numbers.o? Well, numbers.o is easy to get, but what is it dependent on? Well, it's dependent on numbers.cc and numbers.h. And I have those two files because I created them with my editor. They're part of my project. And if there are any changes to those, I'm going to need to make a new numbers.o. Well, how do I get a numbers.o? I say g++-c numbers.cc. And using similar logic, I can create... an entry for main.o. But there's a problem here because I'm not capturing the dependency between main and numbers. So if I change numbers, I have to recompile main, but I'm actually not showing that here. And I can do that by adding numbers.h on the dependency line. So what is the rule for this? So what are the rules for these dependencies? So first of all, the executable is always dependent on all of the .o files. So that's an easy one. And a .o file is always dependent on its .cc file and its .h file and any .h files that the .h file includes. So think about it. If you go look at main.h, we included numbers.h. And that's why numbers.h has to appear on the dependency line. Now, we also included iostream, but we don't 
includes, system includes, on the dependency line, just local includes. In numbers.h, it didn't include any local includes, so that's why there are no .h's to the right here. So that's the rule. A .o file is based on its .cc file, its .h file, and any .h files that its .h file includes, any local .h files that its .h file includes. And so that's it. That's my make file. So now to compile, all I have to do, and let me let me clean up, start from scratch. Now to compile my project, all I have to do is type make. Make looks for a file in the directory called make file, loads it, looks at the dependency information, it examines the modification dates of the files to determine what needs to be built and the presence of the .o files and some of the other things in the dependency lines. So that builds my project. Now if I make a change to main.cc I've changed the modification date. Make sees that, looks at the dependencies, knows that it needs to rebuild main but that it does not need to build numbers again. On the other hand, and so touch will change the modification date of a file. So on the other hand, if I change numbers.cc, I rebuild numbers and I relink. Well, why didn't it rebuild main? Well, it doesn't need to rebuild main because if I'm only changing the .cc file and not the .h, I didn't change the interface. I only changed the inner workings of the method not how I'm calling it. That's what matters, to main at least. So now if I touch numbers.h, then that rebuilds everything. Make will also tell you when your project is up to date. And you can also build specific targets. So for example, let's say I'm doing some work on numbers.h, or, or numbers.cc. Maybe I'm trying to uh, chase down a syntax error. And I don't want to rebuild my entire project, which could consist of a thousand, thousands of files. I just want to rebuild the thing I'm working on. So you can specify, I only want you to make numbers.o, and make will find that target in the file, and it will execute its command. Every time you want to start from scratch, you want to remove your a.o and your start.o, or maybe you want to send your code to someone, your boss, your instructor. So you're going to end up doing this command a lot. We can put additional targets in our make file, and a common target is clean. And clean simply removes your a.out files and your .o files. So now when I want to rebuild, I can say make clean, I can make build from scratch, and then when I'm ready to submit my project, I can clean again and just submit the source code. So that's it. That's a very simple make file. And if you're thinking about thousands of files and millions of lines of code, you can see that this make file has some problems. First of all, we have to list all of our .o's here. And you're going to have one of these entries for every file in your project. So every time you add a new file, you're going to have to add a new entry. And you're going to have to update all this dependency information, which could be really complex. But in the next screenshot, uh, screencast, we'll see how to fix this and come up with a more generic make file that will work for any project and bigger projects.